Buenos dias. Excellent. That's all the Spanish I know. Well, cerveza and other very important words like that. Uh, so, hello. Uh, my name is Mark Schonagel. That's me. Um, I'm one of the evangelists for the Americas, or the lead evangelist for the Americas, and I'm going to talk to you today about Unity for Automotive. Uh, this is a really, really cool thing that's happening with Unity. Um, it's going to be really cool for you all. It's going to be really cool for us. And I want to show you some of the neat things that we can, uh, we can do using all this amazing CAD data that we can now easily import. So I don't like to do PowerPoints very much, but I want to show you just some interesting things uh, that are happening with automotive because it's a very different type of thing that we're doing. Uh, so this little video is going to help start that. And then I'm going to show you some neat stuff inside of Unity. So I'm going to play this video. Oh, it's all stuttery. Back. You know what? Let's not play that in PowerPoint. Let's play that. Let's play that like this. Um, where is it at? Auto teaser. Why is it taking so long to play a video? There we go. All right, so normally there's some exciting music going on, but just ignore that. Uh, but this is basically some of the neat ways that people are using Unity. Uh, that's very different than gaming. Uh, we just saw some stuff there from Volkswagen, from Audi, from Mercedes. Uh, this is uh, uh, from Cry uh, that, those guys. <laughs> Cor not Cor I'm gonna say Corvette. Anyway, this is the Ford Raptor. Uh, the Raptor, that was the cool suspension system on that. So all these different ways of visualizing uh, car data. This right here, I'm gonna stop this. This is absolutely fascinating. People are building cities inside of Unity to teach cars how to drive. Most of the car manufacturers, most of the autonomous uh, car companies out there that are, that are doing this are all using Unity. So they build these very elaborate models, bring them into Unity, they have a car, the car is just like the car, it's just a car model, and they'll have many different cameras on it. Those cameras are going to generate the same type of images that real self-driving cars create. So real images like we see there, that's a black and white shot. Uh, um, LiDAR, uh, all kinds of different images. I'll show you a couple other ones here. This is LiDAR, so this is a laser scan. This is cool here. This is just, it looks like the real world, but this is Unity, and we can't see it. And that's not good. Shoot. Well, that's no good. Oh, there we go, okay. Hopefully that doesn't keep happening. Uh, okay, so this is again. All right, so maybe we'll take a look at the, try, try to look at the video later. But essentially what that was, uh, all that video is showing cars how to drive. And you have to think that if you're depending on a camera to drive you around the world and not kill you, literally kill you, a lot of things have to happen. So one of the most important things is that if a bug, if mud flies on the camera, that that doesn't mess the computer up and it crashes, right? So all these things have to be taken into account. So we're using Unity's machine learning, we're using machine learning that these autonomous car companies have created, uh, all to do this kind of stuff. And this is happening today all over the world, which is, which is pretty cool. Uh, I'm gonna show you a little bit more, I guess, with the PowerPoint, because that can just kind of go, kind of skip the little video bit we had uh, from this slide. So, you know, most of us think of Unity as a game engine. But lately, in the past few years, a lot of big companies have started to use Unity to do these really impressive industrial things. The nice thing about these companies is that they're big, established companies. So as game developers, as, as people in this world, you know, a lot of my friends, uh, I'm, I live in the United States, a lot of my friends are moving around from company to company. Uh, you know, game companies, especially small indie companies, can, you know, they can be around for a year or two and then they're gone. Ford, Chrysler, Lockheed, Boeing, these are companies that have been around for a long time. So it's a really stable work, they have big budgets, uh, and they're, they're extremely anxious to have this type of technology be used. So for all of you guys out there, it's a great way to find a, a non-gaming job that really pays the bills and a really, you know, an, an established company. So I think that's a really good thing for the industry. Uh, and I'm going to show you some really interesting uses uh, for that. So traditionally when you build a car, when you design a car, you start with a clay model. There's a, a basic sketch, uh, then you build life-size clay models like we see here. Well, we're making that shift so that rather than build them in clay, you can build them in VR. And I was actually at Audi, I was at Volkswagen three days ago in Germany. I just flew in last night, yesterday, I don't even know. Uh, after Unite Berlin, so I got to visit these companies, and it's unbelievable what they're using Unity for. Mind blown. Uh, 
this team right here is actually designing this car just like that. That's really what they're doing. And what they see is this. You can see these are each of the avatars for the people, and they're able to, able to make design decisions, all type of, of just decision making with a group, just like they'd be working with Clay, except they're working in VR. Uh, this guy right here, this whole mock-up, this steering wheel system, this is the real steering wheel for this Audi vehicle. He's able to determine what the best position of that wheel is. Maybe it needs to be a little bit up. Maybe it needs to be a little bit down. He's seeing the car like this. Uh, I was literally able to push buttons on the dashboard and have the air conditioning turn on and see the data of the wind coming out the, 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 the fluid dynamics of the, of the air conditioning system, how it flows around the car, what happens when you open the sunroof, how that adjusts the wind, what it feels like in the car to have that happen. It's mind boggling stuff that you just wouldn't think Unity is being used for. Um, here is where Volkswagen is, is training their employees how to build a car on the assembly line before the assembly line is built and before the car is ever manufactured. So all these people are being able to be trained and also with speed, how fast they can do it, how efficiently they can do it uh, with, these, uh, with this virtual reality technology. This is the, the Lincoln experience. So this is basically a configurator. When you go to, a, to buy a car now, rather than go to a showroom and only see three or four different cars, you can pick up the tablet, pick exactly what you want, the color of the leather, the color of the trim, everything that you'd want that car to be and push the button that says you want to order it it gets sent off and your car gets manufactured exactly the way you want it. Really neat stuff. We saw the video or part of the video of the Raptor, how the suspension of the Raptor works, just again to help sell that vehicle. Uh, even in dash displays. So you may have heard at some of the Unites, uh, Unity is working on a new technology called Unity for Small Things. Uh, Unity for Small Things has a, uh, a core footprint. The runtime footprint is 72 kilobytes, a tiny, tiny little version of Unity. That's super solid, it's bulletproof, and we're gonna be able to use that for dashboards, all type of in-car displays, uh, and that's all gonna be with Unity. So one day, you won't see powered by Unity when you turn your car on, but that little speedometer, that gear shifter, all that stuff is gonna be powered by Unity, and that's coming really, really soon. Um, again, here we have some, uh, some autonomous vehicle learning systems. This is a, a fake highway, but the, the cars see this data, uh, LiDAR, this is the, the thing we were seeing earlier where it kind of lost the video. Learning what these cars are, it's amazing to watch these computers identify the cars, what are moving, how fast they're moving, crazy stuff. Uh, again, more LiDAR, this is a, an overhead view, so not a real world from a real camera, but there'll be sensors that are being placed around cities that are gonna feed this data to cars one day. It's, it's mind boggling what, what's happening out there. Um, well, one thing that we needed to do to make this reality happen was we need to get that CAD data, the actual data that builds these cars into Unity. So a few months ago, we partnered with a company called Pixies, and they make, without a doubt, the best CAD importer in the world. It's incredibly fast, but more important, it's incredibly accurate. So you get these really beautiful tessellated polygon versions of your CAD data, which has been really hard to do in the past, uh, so hopefully, we'll be able to show you that. And we're also coming out with the Unity Material Library for automotive. And I'm gonna show you some of that here in the demo as well. Uh, we're gonna ship with over 100 different materials that you would find inside and outside of, of a vehicle. I'll dive into that in a bit. So with that, I'm done with PowerPoint. Let's actually take a look at how this all works. So, I've got an empty scene, cool. Um, I do have one prefab that I've already loaded. We'll take a look at that in a minute. But I wanna show you how easy it is to bring in some crazy high resolution CAD data. So I've installed the Pixies plugin. There's a seven day trial version out there which you all can use for, for free if you want. Um, I've got a, a license which is great and I'm just gonna click on import CAD. So from here, super simple, find your file, all right? So I have here on my desktop uh, somewhere the drivetrain of the Lexus LC500H. So I'm gonna click on open. It's gonna give me a few, uh, a few little options here. First thing I'm gonna do is turn off my LODs. We'll talk about LODs in a minute. Those are levels of detail. Uh, I'm just gonna have it generate one level of detail so it's faster. And I'm gonna tell it to do very high. So the absolute top quality, highest tessellation, highest number of polygons. Uh, I'm gonna tell all of the objects because there's actually about 3,000 individual objects that make up the powertrain. I'm gonna tell it to put it under one root node with every object as an individual object. Uh, and everything else I'm gonna keep uh, basically default. And I'm gonna click on import. Now remember, this is a CAD data, this is a CAD model. It's about 250 megabytes of NURBS data. 
NURBS are not polygons. NURBS are infinitely smooth curves. Uh, it's not loading this. It's actually converting this right now. And one thing that's super important or impressive is if I open up Task Manager and I fire up my, perf it's going really slow because that's actually a good thing. Because the Pixies plugin is fully multi-threaded. It's so multi-threaded that it won't even let Task Manager open my performance monitor. So performance and resource monitor, you can do it. All right, well, everything's at 100%, essentially, or at least it was. There it goes, so now it's back at 100%. So it does this first pass, pegs out at 100%, does a little bit of something, and now it comes back with every single one of my cores. Uh, this laptop, it's a small portable laptop, has four real cores, four hyper-threaded cores, so it's a four-core laptop. Everyone pegged out at 100%. Normally, I would never spend a minute importing a file, but I think this is really impressive. Uh, we're gonna generate about 3,200 models, uh, objects, and it's gonna total over five, or over 50 million polygons of data. And I think it's done, almost, almost. Oh, shoot, I forgot something really, really important. I'm not plugged in, yikes. And when you're not plugged in, your computer runs really slow. Oh no, I forgot to plug in. Ha, I'm dumb. Where's my power? Ha, power. That would have happened a little bit faster, but that's all right. Here, I'll see if I can multitask. So there it is. That's cool, there's the model. And let me just plug in really quick. Boy, I'm just causing a ruckus. I'm glad this is being filmed. That's great. Can all watch this later. All right, so. There's my model going way slower than it normally goes. Let me find a plug. Where is the plug? It's all taped up. Why is this all taped? Hang on. Sorry, guys. There. And no. Oh, well, one more. Ha! <laughs> Glad I had coffee. All right, now... Now we have power. All right, sorry about that. It would have happened even faster, so how cool is that? Anyway, we're gonna do VR, and for VR we really need some power. So anyway, check this model out. Every single little detail of this model is in here. And one thing that's actually amazing too is Lexus gave me this. This is the real model that Lexus uses to manufacture this vehicle. You never get this from anybody. I have a hard enough time getting like a character or a sprite from some game companies, let alone the actual manufacturing object for this guy. So let's take a look at the steering wheel. Look how crazy accurate this is. Every little nook and cranny, look at all the little faceters that hook all this stuff, it's all in there. Crazy. Uh, so now that we have this in here, what are we gonna do with it? Well, we could easily add materials, that's no problem. Uh, we could make an exploded view where we kind of see it expand. You know, that's a really popular thing for engineers to do. Every time I show this to an engineer, they're absolutely blown away how fast I'm about to do what I'm about to do is. I have a little script. Uh, because the way this created all of these different objects, so each one of these parts here is a piece of the, of the car, thousands of them. And actually, if I expand the, the prefab, take a look at all these. Those are all the things it created right in front of you while I was on battery power. <laughs> Look at that, <laughs> crazy. So all that stuff is now nicely loaded. I wanna do an expanded view. Well, one thing that's kind of goofy about CAD models is your pivot point, they're all over the place. Uh, sometimes they're where you want them, but you know, you're not animating in CAD, you're modeling. So the pivots on this thing are all whacked out. So I've got a simple little script that's gonna move the pivots to the center of my object. It's gonna basically uh, figure out how big my car is, build a bounding box, and put the center right in the middle. So I got a tool here called Custom Tools, Adjust Hierarchy, boop, and that's all it does. It just simply really quickly recalculates the pivot. The second thing I'm gonna do is add a script that's going to allow me to do the exploded view. So it's just a simple, it's not a super simple script. You can see it's that long, not crazy. It's just gonna do a little bit of math and I'm just gonna take this guy, drag and drop it on my root object like so. And now if I press play, 
go into play mode, I should be able to whoop, expand my car like that, which is really awesome. And I can move all around, I can move through that, I can see the pistons, the cylinders, every little bit, there's the transmission. Now this is all very, very cool, uh, super easy, it's all just using the middle mouse button to do that expansion, it took just a few seconds. This would take CAD people sometimes days, weeks, months to do in Maya, things like that, because they have to do it all by hand. Uh, here I'm just running a little script in, in, uh, in my game view. So another thing I can do is do this in VR, so I'm hoping, this is a little bit of a challenge because my VR headset uses an HDMI port and then to project I need a little dongle so sometimes this doesn't work quite right so hopefully this works. What I'm gonna do is launch my mixed reality. <laughs> Projector is not liking me today, yay. All right, well, <laughs> don't, don't clap yet. <laughs> I see a car. All right, let's see if this works. Let's see if mixed reality portal works. All right, that works. You know, really, I just didn't have my whole amount of time prepared, so I figured this would be a great way to fake 10 minutes of, of demo. All right, so I gotta scan the room because this headset doesn't use trackers, which is really nice. Uh, but I just gotta do a quick little room scan. And now, Cool, all right, so this is working. Let's see if this all works. Come on, technology. Cool, uh, all right, so let's just see if this works. I'm gonna go into build settings. I'm going to turn on player settings, turn virtual reality supported. Now, because this is a Windows device, I'm using uh, Windows Universal. And if I grab my controllers, whatever. <laughs> if I grab my controllers, we should have one cool thing. All right, so I got one more script, which is gonna take my, uh, my mouse movement and pipe it into the headset. All I have to do is drop that on my root node as well, and we should click on here, make sure that works. Yep, that's good. So, let's test this out. Where'd my headset go? It's on the ground somewhere. Oh, there it is, all right, here goes. For all the money, press play, and it's working on my end. Hooray. Grab my little controllers, and I should be able to spin that around, and, ah, oh, wait. Well, it's, it's, oh no, wait, one other thing. Sorry, I got a little flustered with our little technical issues. I forgot to do one more thing, which is, I need to add the controller. So, I have a couple models. These are actually of an Oculus, Rift's controllers, and I'm just gonna parent them to my camera. So if I double click on them, there they are, a couple little Rift controllers sitting nicely there. So if I press play now, this input is gonna get piped onto my car. So let's check that out, let's press play, grab my headset again, and you guys should see what I see, hopefully. Do I see controllers? I see controllers. There's my car, and whoop, sweet. And now, <laughs> Oh, you all are way too nice. I don't know why it's jittery, but who cares? I wanna show you the neatest thing that you could possibly ever do in VR. Stick your face into a steering wheel. <laughs> I honestly can't tell you how amazing that is. It's, I mean, as an engineer, I can't, this would be like stupidly valuable, but just as a nerd, this is awesome. And a car geek, like, anyway, that's really cool. Normally it doesn't take much effort at all, it's actually really, really simple to do. Throw a couple scripts on there, throw the controllers on there, and you're good to go. Um, anyway, that was a little more difficult than it was supposed to be. So that's the easy way of looking at it, but making it extra complicated for a demo to show you how easy it is to bring CAD data in and animate it, go into VR, add these cool explode scripts, and go from there. Now, that's all fine and dandy, but we wanna make this stuff look really cool. So I'm gonna show you one more thing, which is, gonna load up another version of Unity. And this one's gonna show off 2018.2. Uh, this is actually beta one, so this is a little bit early beta for 2018.2. This is the new HDRP, and this is gonna show off the new automotive material library that we're creating. So we want 
when car manufacturers, when industrial uh, companies have this tool, they, we want them to have these really amazing high resolution, tileable materials. So we're building a library. We're gonna have at least 100 materials in this library that are gonna give us the ability to have, and let me actually kill this because I can tell my performance is slow. Close that up, there we go. So I'm gonna zoom into my car and let's zoom in there. Let's just grab, say, this seat, frame up, and, oh, come on, wrong way. Check that out. Can you guys see that grain? Yeah, so we're not only going to provide a library of these materials, we're going to show you how to make these materials yourself. Uh, normally, you'd use a, a machine that costs about a million dollars called an X-rate machine. We've got a way for about $2,000 with a camera, a flash, a polarizer, and a little tiny steel ball, how you make these materials yourself. And we're going to show you how that all works. Uh, but essentially, I can just take any one of these leathers. Like, who wouldn't want a nice couch type material. And you can see the tiling is different there. No biggie, you could just change the resolution of your, um, of your mesh, of your, your, your UVs, which I was gonna show you in another part of the demo. Uh, but let's take a look at some of the other materials on here. So, well, actually we have the car paint, which is there. So we have a new car paint shader, which is gonna have pearl and flake and all the cool things you'd expect to have in a car paint shader. The anti-aliasing right now is not good. Uh, if you look at beta seven of 2018.2, it's much, much better. Uh, and it's only gonna get better. We're gonna make anti-aliasing a huge priority uh, for the HDRP. But look at these cool little glossy metals we have on there. All these sweet materials. And if I go th through some of these, we have different leathers. Uh, where's like rustic? We could put burlapy stuff on there. And you know, if you click on it, we can say, all right, you know what? I want this to be a little bit more dense, so just change the tiling of that, like so. And is that the right one? Yeah, so now it's a bit more dense. Go back to something like so. Uh, we've got scarlet velvet, Oop, wrong one, grab that guy. All kinds of cool materials to make your automotive life much easier. Uh, and again, we're gonna have over 100 of these, so really cool. And again, wanna thank our friends at Lexus for, uh, for hooking me up with that model. You never get a model like this, so super happy about that. Uh, how much time do I have? Does anyone know? Do I have time? I know we had a little bit of a flub. I'm gonna, I kinda wanna keep showing you stuff. Oh, perfect. Oh, we got excellent time. Let me show you what happens when you put all of this stuff together. This is a little model that we made for, um, for Unite Berlin. So we had our Autotech Summit. Uh, we worked closely with Volkswagen to build this really sweet demo of the brand new 2019 Touareg. And this is gonna show off the new material libraries, gonna show off uh, basically CAD importing tool. This entire project was done in two weeks um, with actually a lot of hiccups just using a beta piece of software, but uh, this is kind of what you can achieve. And this is just running on my little laptop and I'll show you in a second. I'll prove that it's actually real time in a second when I uh, just wanna get a shot where we have no depth of field. But what's cool about these CAD models is there's so much detail. All these little, because they have to manufacture this stuff, right? So the detail's all there. The signal, the, the light bulbs, all those cool little things inside the light bulb are just there. And this shot here doesn't have any, uh, I'm just gonna drive now. Check that out. Like doing this in VR is gonna be soon, like HDRP doesn't support VR yet, but it will soon. Having this kind of quality of lighting materials, we are using a light map on here, um, so the doors don't open, but when this project is finished, oh, probably in a couple weeks, we'll have uh, the ability to open all the doors, make this fully interactive, all that good stuff. Cool, huh? Yeah, we've got, uh, HDRP is pretty sweet. There's actually a great uh, augmented reality app you can get. It's only on iPhone, but it's also of the Touareg. And uh, you can just put a Touareg right there in your car house and walk around it and, and there you go. Cool, all right, well that's that. So let me end this and let me shift gears a little bit and show you Pixie Studio. So everything that I've showed you so far, let me reset that. Everything I've showed you so far is taking really high resolution data, uh, bringing it into Unity, doing the VR stuff, having fun technical issues, um, and all that good stuff. Well, what if you wanted to take a high-res model, you know, that, that car was 50 million triangles. What if I wanna bring it in, you know, and do something, make it much more reduced, uh, so that you can use it like on a hollow lens or on something a bit more lightweight. So we have another tool uh, that comes with Pixies. So if you get the Pixies bundled, you get Studio as well. 
And that's this tool right here. So it's standalone from Unity. Uh, it's a little bit different. And this is really, really good for optimizing your polygon models or op optimizing your CAD models, your NURBS models, tessellating them and then bringing them, uh, you know, turning them into low res poly models. So I've got an object here, this little jackhammer. And this might not be as super exciting as uh, some of the other stuff I showed you, but if you've ever done polygon reduction or tried to clean up a model, this is a really cool tool. So what we have here is a jackhammer, right? Now it's all lines right now because it's still NURBS. It's still a bunch of curves. So the first thing I wanna do is convert it into polygons. Uh, before that, I'm gonna run one thing and I'm gonna tell it to repair CAD. And here with the tolerance of 0.1 millimeter, it's gonna mean that if I have two points that are closer than 0.1 millimeters together, it's gonna to merge them together. So already right there, it's gonna do a lot of work for us. I just hit execute and it's done, but it does a lot of neat stuff behind the scenes, especially when you have really, really big models. Um, so again, it doesn't really look like it did a whole lot, but it did, uh, you know, it did some behind the scenes stuff. So from there, let's go ahead and tessellate it. So here I got a few options for my tessellation. Uh, I'm gonna keep everything the default. So we're gonna tell it that every 10 millimeters create a vertex. So if you have 10 millimeters apart, create a vertex, 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 vertex. So you have control over that. I'm gonna generate a PBR material. Uh, so I wanna generate my tangents for that. That's very important. So generate tangents is checked. Uh, everything else is good. And I'm using the low preset. Uh, because I want to create the lowest number of polygons I can while still preserving the shape. Because again, my, my target for this is something like a hollow lens where I don't have quite the compute power. So I'm just going to click on execute and boop, there we go. So now I've got a nice tessellated version of that model. Uh, really quick, really easy. Now one thing to point out is it preserved the materials. This thing happened to come from Katia. Uh, it preserved the materials, but each one of these materials is now a draw call or a batch. So if you know Unity well, you know that's a bad thing. So we have some tools that can uh, basically clean that up as well. So I'll show you how that works. So what I'll do is I'm going to go into my, I'm gonna select my root here, and I'm just gonna go into, what am I looking for here? Root and reduce mesh, what do I wanna do? Uh, oh no, I wanna merge my parts. So optimize mesh, merge parts, where'd that go? Uh, oh no, it's under scene. Sorry, Mark. No. The merge parts. Actually, open this up. I want to show you one other thing. So it generated all these parts. I want to merge them all up. So scene, merge parts. Gosh darn it. <laughs> Sorry. So if you watch, that just basically got rid of all those parts. If I do that with it selected. Cool. All right. So from there, it left all these individual assemblies. So these are actually empty now. It did merge it into one object, but now I've got all these empty little retainers. So again, under scene, I can do a delete assemblies. Like so, and that cleans up the model quite a bit. So now I just have basically one model right there, the, uh, the actual jackhammer. If I click on my little checkerboard, we can see that we have, if I unselect it, uh, no UVs on here, but we do see some pink geometry. Anywhere that we see pink geometry, that's gonna be inverted normals. So if I were to bring this into Unity, this would not be visible. So we're gonna wanna have to fix that. Super easy to fix. And you can see we have some on the inside as well, but those are okay because they are on the inside. So no big deal there. So for there, uh, and if we should check on our wireframe, we can see that a little bit better. Turn that off, cool. Um, so for here, I'll just go on to my generate my UVs, like so and click on execute, that's good. Yeah, so this is gonna generate my UV mesh for me. And there we have a large set of UVs. Now I could have increased or decreased the density. That might be a little bit much, but that's all right. Uh, if I go into UVs and check my UV viewer, we still see that I don't actually see my UVs baked. So I've generated the map, but I haven't actually given myself a material or a texture to put that on there. If I click on here, we would see a texture if I had one. So we need to make that. So to do that, I'll just go into here, into my, um, my UVs, and I'll tell it to repack my UVs, like so. And all this is good. Basically, not a whole lot of options there. Just basically generate my map. This is gonna take a second. So one fun thing to do is turn on your cutting plane, and you can start to just to see, and move that guy like so. You can kind of tear into that and just see that all of your purple normals are actually facing on the inside. So that's good, right? You want your, your normals facing inward, and that's just a way for me to kill a few minutes while it's baking all of these UVs. Almost done. 
almost done. Cool, it's done. So now if we go back to our UV viewer, now we see all of our UVs all nicely packed. So it just generated this for us. And if I go here, there's still no texture. There's no material that has those materials baked. So I do have materials on here, right? I see those colors. Those are, those are polygonal colors. I wanna turn this into a texture map. So one neat thing about Pixie Studio is every single thing that you do in the menus are fully scriptable. Um, the internet is being really wonky, otherwise I'd bring up the full list of API commands. But essentially I've written this one right here, which is gonna bake a texture map based on the diffuse color, and it's gonna be a 2048 by 2048 texture. So I could do this through menus, but just to show you that we have fully APIs as well, uh, just click on this button right here, which is gonna execute the script, which will execute the script. Oh, that's save script, sorry. Which one is it? Execute script. And that will start to bake my UVs, and now if I go back to my UV viewer, I should have, oh wait a minute, why didn't that work? Oh, sorry, I forgot to do something. I need to select the jack. You need to select the model that you want to actually run the script on. So do that again. And there we go. Go back to UVs, UV viewer. And now I can see my, my map. All the things that it created are now on that texture map. So now you can easily take this into Photoshop or just keep it the way it is. Uh, but now instead of having all of these objects have individual draw calls and materials, they're now just on one texture map, which is great. Uh, maybe one last thing that I'll do is clean up all of my inside polygons. So a lot of times with these CAD models, you have all this data that the camera will never see. That's only gonna be visible if you fly into it. Well, if I'm not gonna fly into this model, why would I wanna render all the stuff that's in there? Why would I wanna preserve those, those, uh, those polygons? So I can do a reduce mesh and just say hidden removal. And what this tool will do is it'll fly cameras around. Right now it's set to 16 cameras. So it's gonna take 16 cameras, look at this object from all different vantage points and figure out which polygons are visible, which ones aren't. From here, I'll just click on execute. Make sure you have this, uh, the level set to polygons. Click on execute and watch us go from 44,000 down to, down to 29,000. So we just lost 15,000 polygons without having to do any work at all, which if you've ever cleaned up a polygonal mesh, that's a pain in the butt and that just did it all automatically for you. So you don't have to fly in there, find all the ones that are invisible or, or not, not showing, and just delete them. So from there, we're pretty much done. We've, we've converted our model, we've preserved the textures, we created a UV map, and now all I need to do is export this. Export model, we'll call it, um, I don't know, blah, dot FBX, because that's what kind of day it's been. There we go. I had like a 20 hour flight, like, 24 hours ago, so I'm gonna use that as my disclaimer. Anyhow, now there's my model, whatever it's called, and there it is. This is Windows super new awesome viewer. I don't know why it doesn't preserve the colors correctly, but if I go into Unity, let's go into Unity, and let's just do this one here. Pretty sure this is an empty model or an empty project. Hmm. Come on. All right, cool. So now I should be able to take this, drop it in there, and drop it in here. And there it is. And just maybe give it a little rotation. Negative 90 in X should do the trick. And there is our nice super low res model, all nicely tessellated. And if I click on it, notice it's all one big material ID, or one, everything's on one, one object, so all the material IDs. So easily drag and drop some of those new cool autom automotive materials on there, just to be looking very, very pretty and all that good stuff. So anyway, that was my exciting presentation. Sorry for the little snafus, hope that made it at least funny. Um, it was funny for me. <laughs> Anyhow, thank you all very much. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll certainly be around, so uh, let me know, and again, thank you. <laughs> Woo